This company actually made a solar generator. Wink, wink. What up, I'm I from Ask Out Solar, where I like to keep solar simple and show real life with it, right? I had to laugh because I don't care for the whole solar generator versus power station debate. I call them power stations. This is a power station, but it has a solar panel built into it, which is the closest thing you can get to an actual solar generator, right? This is the Browie TNC Partners in Crime 600. That's a New Orleans reference. <laughs> It is a 614 watt hour, 600 watt inverter portable power station with a 30 watt built in solar panel, which is nice. Now, right off the bat, it has the AC inverter. It's 110, which is not the worst thing, but you'll see a little bit larger power loads on it because in order to reach the amps that you need, when you go from 120 down to 110, you need a slight boost in amps. So it may look like it's using more power than it's using on a power station that has 120 volts, which will need slightly less amps. Oh, I also did a capacity test. Others have done a capacity test. And what they have landed on is kind of industry average, 84%, 85%, 86% across both the AC and the DC. I believe if I'm, I think I'm remembering that correctly. I may even have some footage. If I have some footage, I'll drop it. If not, you know. I don't have it. As it relates to ports, it has USB-C 65 watts. It's not bi-directional one way. And it has two quick charge USB-A ports at up to like 18 watts or something like that. I don't know. It's quick charge. Who cares? They're not slow. It's a good look. It has a 5521 input, but it has 5525 outputs. That kind of sucks. It has the AC inverter slot right here. It's one of them, not two. It makes sense because of the vertical design. And then it has the 12 volt outlet rated at uh, 10 amps. Now it does not include a solar charging cable, which is kind of a bummer. I don't know why companies can't throw a $10, $8, $7. I don't know how much those cables cost wholesale. But why can't you just throw a cable in there? I feel like they're in abundance, I assume. Now what they do have in the box is a wall charger with the power brick and the adapter cord. It is 5521, like I said all earlier. It also has a 12 volt to 5521 charger, and then it comes with a set of adapters as well. Now, I'm not sure why it comes with these adapters. There's no reason for these to be included in here. Now, the power adapter is rated at 120 watts. I think the highest I've seen was maybe like 105 from the device, but the max input that the 5521 can take is 4.5 amps. So you get 4.5 amps from the power adapter. You get that from solar as well. Interesting thing, not a big deal, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. It would have been nice if this had some PD charging. I always appreciate that. It also would have been nice if it had a 100 watt uh, port, but I'm not tripping. Now I'll tell you about how much power you can get from this 30 watt panel in a little bit, but first let's talk about the solar input. You can put a 100 watt panel on it. 100 watt panels are typically rated at about five point something amps. And realistically, you're gonna get less than that unless you live just in banging solar conditions and most of us don't, which is why you don't get the most uh, full 100 watt output from a 100 watt panel. You typically see about 80%, which is about four or five, four to five amps. So the 4.5 amp input limit is not the biggest deal. Now you can dual charge from the so external solar panel and the internal solar panel. This is what we're getting in from the two panel array. We're getting about 64. But this 30 watt panel, let's look at how much watts you can get from it just by itself. Here is some early morning solar panel testing. You can see we have a little bit of shade on the bottom. I'm suspecting that these are wired in parallel because look at how much output we're getting. 15 watts. What I'm gonna do right now is put my arm in front of the bottom one. You can see it's still getting 15 watts. So it's not impacting the top. I adjusted the chair back as far as I can go and you can see it's getting about 22 watts. I've seen close to 30 watts on this panel regularly. So look at that, 28 watts from a 30 watt panel. That's fantastic. Now, I think that that's pretty dope that this panel is putting out that much power. It's like they nailed it. I mean, you can't complain about a 30 watt panel getting in 28 watts. 
Maybe it's actually like a 40 watt panel in reality and they rated it at 30 watts. So YouTubers like me could be like all gleeful about getting 30 watts, but hey, I'm gleeful nonetheless. Now, as it relates to the user interface, so to speak, it has three buttons on it. It has a display button and then it just has AC and DC. The screen is like, you know, it's fine. It's not gonna blow you away. <laughs> it's a basic screen. It doesn't show the percentages of input as it relates to how much battery capacity you have. I've never made a really big stink about that. That's not a big concern on my list. If you wanna get me in, in like excited about something, show me how many watt hours you think I have left. Percentage is nice, don't get me wrong, but to not have, you know, 69% instead of 60, to not have 48% instead of 40 or 60, it's not a big deal. But you get the bars 20, 40, 60, 80. And you know, it is what it is. As you can see here on the screen, when you turn on the AC or the DC, it shows you that it's on. Now, I don't know if this thing is regulated. I have to check that. So you can see that this is at 12.12 .12 volts and it is pretty much dead. I'm putting 90 watts in it. Um, and I want to see what happens when it hits 20%. And we'll see if the 12.12 .12 volts hold strong. Be right back. All right, we are still at 12.2. And we got 20%. So I'm going to say that's regulated because if it wasn't, it would be lower than 12.2. <laughs> and as the charge goes up, it would have went up higher. That's my theory. Y'all correct me if I'm wrong. Which brings me to the device itself. We're still talking about the user interface. These little joints right here, these covers, I'm not crazy about them. They don't fit that well. At least the USB-C doesn't fit well. The uh, barrel connector joint doesn't fit well. I mean, they go in there. The cover on the AC is really solid and the cover on the 12 volt is really solid. But other than that, those top two, I, I'm not the biggest fan of them. After the video's done, I may pull them off to be honest with you. I may not, I don't know, but that's how I feel about those little plug covers. I, I'm not the biggest fan of them. It, it has a nice build to it. The handle is really nice. I like the fact that the form factor is different than some other power stations. Me being kind of like a fan of power stations, it's always cool to have a different approach to a very like square rectangular box situation. This one being really narrow, it's very like capable in terms of being able to grab it and throw it in a car to take for a drive and so on and so forth. One thing I do like about the panel is that the panel has a very good hinge on it. The hinge can set pretty much in any place. Not that you would need it to do that, but you have the option to have it like partially open, not quite all the way flat. You could have it kind of like at an angle. I wish this back part could share in that, but it pretty much has one kind of stance. You can extend it all the way out and you can make that work in a situation where if you put it up against the wall or something like that, you could not have it all the way fully extended. But the device is mainly made to be fully extended out on the back angle or the back leg and then the panel's made to be fully open but it's nice that that panel has a bit of a a strong hinge to it you don't have to worry about it flopping down and getting stuck i don't think that that matters to most people but it's just something that i've observed now i do have a question for you guys real quick before i tell you what i think about the device overall what would you use a device like this for what's the scenario that comes to mind where you think man having that power station with that panel built in would be perfect now, I look at this device and I really like it. I'm a fan of this thing having a power station and a panel built in together because that way you have the ultimate kind of package in terms of being able to power your needs on the go to supplement your power. I know one video was talking about how these 12 volt fridges will use about 50 watts, 35 watts, and they're not always on. So to have a panel built right into the joint where you could get 30 watts, 28 watts, 20 watts, 22 watts. I think that that's fantastic because it allows you to extend the runtime of your particular trip where you're using your stuff. It allows you to supplement more power in terms of charging a cell phone or a laptop. I just think that it's dope that it's all self-contained. One joint, you carry that joint, you put it in your car, you take it with you on a trip, you take it outside in the yard, you're watching TV in the patio. You have one thing that can provide power for your situation. Now, ideally, you would want to have a situation like this be charged up. And then that panel just supplements your power as you're charging devices and using it and putting a load on it. I don't think you would want to go out into a situation or a scenario where this joint is at like 10% 
and you're going to rely on the 30 watt panel to juice it up. That's just not realistic. But I think it's the ultimate peace of mind kind of design where you can have something and you know that you're not stuck if you left your panel at home or if you didn't have space for your panel. But then you have the added benefit of being able to toss a 100 watt panel on it and be able to get more power into the device along with the 30 watt panel, which results in you being able to charge that device a little bit faster than you would with just a 100 watt panel. 614 watts, 20 to 30 watts coming from the 30 watt panel, 60 to 65 watts coming from a 100 watt panel. If you're lucky, you're getting about 80. That's a good look over the course of a day where you could have this device out and you could have the panel out getting power into a 614 watt hour capacity battery. I just think that that's dope. Also, now something that did come to mind when I thought about this device is the fact that it is a power station with a panel built in. In the summer, would you feel comfortable leaving it out in the sun? Now, I don't have a way to test that. I wish I had like a temperature thing where I could read stuff and all that jazz. But what I will say is the power station, because of how it's designed, the panel basically covers the front of the power station. So I think that that will provide the appropriate amount of shading for the device so that the device does not overheat. I'm sure that that wouldn't be a problem, but that's where my brain goes because you know, Power Station 101 is you don't leave it out in the sun, especially in the summer. If you live in the winter in a colder climate, then being out in the sun is not the biggest deal, but don't quote me on that. That's just how I live out here, living a thug life. It's also worth noting that, I'ma just be honest, I would love to see the 2.0 version of this, where you know, a, a 100 watt PD port, I'd like to see an updated screen on it. I mean, the design is as innovative as you can get just in terms of what it does. It's a power station with a panel built into it, relatively compact, relatively light, but it feels a little dated in the design, but that's okay because it still gets the job done. At the end of the day, whether you like a power station or dislike a power station, if it provides power when your power is out or it provides power when you're out on a go, that's a win. We can be as selective as we want to and I am super selective, but as long as you getting that power from it, it's a good day. Cool.